What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for another episode of Stranded Deep. Where you and I are continuing to build our little log house over here. Although I think today, I think today we're actually going to make progress. Welcome on back in. I got bit by a snake about a thousand times trying to gather wood from this island. The whole place looks like it was attacked by a tornado made of chainsaws. I don't like how ugly the islands get in this game once you strip them of all their wood. It just makes me feel bad. I just be like, look at this wonderful, glorious place that we've made. This beautiful environment, and we've just annihilated it so that we can have walls around us. Just so we can have walls around us. I mean, what's one guy in an environment like this? What's one guy? Although apparently other people have been here because there's shipwrecks everywhere. I don't think there would be this many shipwrecks if other people weren't supposed to be here. So our walls are mostly constructed. Our hammer fell apart previously. I'm hoping I can finish off with the hammer without things going too wrong. I have all the supplies we need, and so this construction should go reasonably well. I'm thinking that I want the door to be right here. So we have that little stone out front. It'll make like a natural step up into our house. And that, to me, that's classy. That's class right there. That looks good. That's one of those things that people walk in, they're like, ooh... Good call, man. Good call. Uh, I will also... I need another foundation. And I will throw another wood foundation over here. And so there it is. So that wood foundation goes in for our little fishing deck or whatever it is that we're going to use it as. Either way, this is not going to be like open living space. But I just wanted to create a windbreak for our character. And so there it is. We have our deck. We have most of our walls in. I will probably... Let me take a look at the crafting menu, actually, and see what we got going on here. So we have a wall with a slot missing for a door or anything like that. I know we can actually click and drag this. So we've got arches, doors. I assume doorways are around here somewhere too. Also roofs. So we can have a wooden roof. Can we have like a thatch roof or... Oh really, it's just all sticks now. Really? That's kind of interesting. I had thought that, uh, that I was gonna need a bunch of thatch. And so I have like a ton of thatch strips and whatnot. And doesn't look like I'm going to need it. For a driftwood door, I'm going to need some lashings. How do I make... Can I make, like, a door arch? There it is. A driftwood door arch. I'm going to do that then. We'll put in a driftwood arch right here. Oh, that doesn't require any construction. Well, even better then. Not even going to concern myself with it. I suppose I can just use all these palm fronds to maybe make... I don't know. I've got a ton of palm fronds, and I don't know what to use them for. I have no idea how those are going to serve me in the future. Maybe for bed rolls or something like that? As far as roof construction goes, I've still got an okay supply of sticks. And I think it's just grabbing sticks from the nearby area, which is a nice little feature too. Because I only had like two stacks of sticks with me. I don't know how I want to build this. I don't know exactly how this roof is going to work. So we've got like a roof corner right here. Do I have to make ceilings first though? Is that the way that this is going to go? Let me take a look here. So you got a wood roof middle. Ah, I can go like so. Okay, I saw that. There it is. So I could put in a wood roof right there, although that kind of concerns me, like, how do I cover that area, you know? I can also have it go that way. Okay, I'm going to have to play around with this for a second. I may be able to do most of this with just corners, I think. So, like, if I put one right there, and let's say we go and we get this roof taken care of, it's going to be like a weird pointy arrow house, but having something over our head is better than having nothing over our head. So I'm just going to go for it. I just want to be, like, concealed. I just want to have myself taken care of. So we got a wood roof right there as well. I think if I rotate that like so, yeah, that'll look all right. That'll look all right. They made roof construction a little bit more interesting. Roof construction used to be, like, flat. That was basically, you just put, like, a flat top on top of your house, and that was just the way that it works. It looks like now they've got that worked out a little bit better. And, in fact, I think we're just going to use middles all the way down. I don't think we're going to use... Because, like, let's say that I use a roof middle here. Oh, I don't have enough sticks. I'm out of sticks now. Shoot, we go through stuff quick with that construction. We went through shit real quick with that construction. All right, well, that's cool. Let's go ahead and we'll uh, hang our lantern up here by the front door. Get this thing like maybe if there's an open space. I don't want to drop this into the ocean. So I'll, that's good enough. That's close enough. I'll take that. That's perfect. And other than that, I think we should be able to just use corners all the way down. Although it might be a little bit snippy about it. I could put a corner there, a corner there, and just one middle. And so I think maximum that'll take about 16 more sticks. So let me go fetch those. Let me see if I can find some sticks around. 
Cool. We're basically on the back end of it now. I think we should have enough supplies once I get this all taken care of to where we should be able to finish off the roof. And then we'll be done with this. We can go to a different island and we can start looking around for motors and things of that kind so that we can start building ourselves a baller ship. And actually, once we need the ship, with the new shipbuilding mechanics, we won't really need our base anymore. That's the nice thing about the shipbuilding mechanics is you're actually kind of capable at this point, I think anyways, of making yourself like a fully sustained base on water. I don't know if I should use... I think I need a middle for this. And so we'll go to the building menu. We'll go up to the... Roofs. And then I think we need a wood roof middle right here. I think is what we're looking at. And if I can get that to go like right there, that's exactly where I need you to be. Perfect. And so there's that. We'll do the exact same thing one more time. And don't worry the building is still a little sticky if you haven't gotten it it's not a big deal it's taken me a minute to get used to it too if my hammer breaks during this process i swear to god we have no rocks left and so if we if we run out of rocks at this point it's going to be a little bit wacky it's going to be a little bit crazy there we go this is getting a little too familiar though this game is making me do stuff i used to do in real life I'm not roofing with thatch or anything but i used to be a roofer it's a rough job man that's not a job for that's not a job for gentle folk that's a rough job. That's a job that will definitely put you on notice if, like, your physical game is weak. Like, you have guys come out there like bodybuilders and stuff like that and be like, Oh, I can do this. And I'll be like, Oh, it's just, it's not about just lifting heavy shit, man. This job is the whole package. You gotta be able to withstand ridiculous temperatures. You gotta be able to lift heavy shit all day. Your cardio's gotta be on point, too, because 90% of the time you'd be sitting around, like, with your heart pounding out your ears, just doing super hardcore labor. I mean, I'm sure you'll be okay. You just gotta stick with it. That's the hard part, though, is like people would work for a couple of weeks and just burn out and not be able to keep going and quit. There we go. So we've got our little house. Very nice. Uh, let's see what we can do with what we've got going on here. The sun is coming up, so we're probably gonna do a little bit more wreck diving. As far as organization goes, I'm gonna take some of these crates. And I'm just gonna move these inside, and then we'll use the label maker to kind of get these labeled. And there we go. I can get this through the door. It's like moving. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, so we've got our wooden crate right there. Ah, shit. That wasn't what I wanted. All right, so we'll move that to right there. And I will just drag you to, like, here. There we go. So we've got our crates. We should probably build a fire somewhere around our domicilo, given the fact that everything that comprises our house is made out of... Uh, everything that comprises our house is more or less made out of flammable materials that might also be a poor choice but i don't think the game takes that into account so i'm not going to worry about it we'll run this stuff in here can i mention can i just mention how much i love the fact that you can just drag and drop stuff in this game like gmod style for whatever reason that just makes the game better to me like the fact that i don't put it in my inventory or anything like that if i can carry crates with me and these crates have things in them What's stopping me from just keeping crates in my inventory? A question arises. Like, what stops me from just keeping crates inside my inventory then and carrying those around with, with me so that I always have, like, the materials I need to get stuff done? Do I have any drinkable coconuts left over here? One. Alright, well, that'll have to do it for right now. If that's all that I got, I guess that's all that I got. But yeah, there's our little longhouse right there. Not bad. That's the new construction system with the new roofs and everything else. Pretty sweet stuff. I hadn't had a chance to play around with it yet, but I found it to be fun and satisfying. I mean, it works about as well as you expect it to work. I do need that shark to go away. I don't know how I feel about that thing being around here. I don't see him either. Ah, oh, shit. Well, luckily, when you're wreck diving, in general, these sharks won't bother you. Dude, why are you inhaling the water like that? Like, you're coughing and sputtering like it's my fault, but... For real, though. Like, humans don't breathe water, so stop doing that. Watch out for that urchin right there. We'll grab this crate and we'll take it back up to the surface. And yeah, if we can get multiple crates, then I'm just going to carry crates with me, and then I'll load the crates up and bring those back so that I can do a ton more cargo loading. That seems about right. But first things first, let's see what's going on with this thing. So what was inside this crate right here? Anything good? Oh, this is an empty one. Fine by me. So yeah, we can carry wood crates around with us. 
And as far as I know, that should increase our carrying capacity, I think. I mean, I can't tell you 100% if that's how it's going to work. But I say we go to a new island. I say we go to a new island. We're going to treat this as our central base for the moment. I will drop the remaining sticks over here, and then we'll get going. So we're off on the road again. I don't know. Is that another crate right there? That's another crate right there. Hold on. Man, these guys just loading me up with crates right now, making me feel all good. These birds are gaggling up in the tree, causing all kinds of problems, getting into bird fights and whatnot. Uh, we've got baked beans, and we've got a refined hammer. Very nice. And then this one was empty, correct? No, do not drop the refined hammer. We're going to need that. We're going to need that very badly. So, yeah, I'm going to bring these crates with me. We've also got baked beans. We're not really hungry right now, so I'll leave these back at home. Actually, I'll bring them with me just in case we can't find a food supply over here. Got flare guns. Compass would probably be smart. And then other than that, let's jump on the boat and be the hell up out of here. I am going to drift over to that side. So that's our old island that we started on right there. Instead, I'm looking for something a little bit closer. And that looks to be the guy. That looks to be the one that I want to go to. So let me break out a compass here. Well, let me get a better heading first. I always like to I like to take down my heading just in case I forget which direction I came from or if the raft moves for whatever reason. So that way I know with azimuthal I can get back to where I need to go. I can just shoot an azimuth real fast and get the hell out of here. Fun factoid, if you have a nice uh if you have a nice compass, it actually has I don't know if kids know this or not, but if you have a nice compass How do I open it? Or did it just not open? There we go. That's almost directly southeast. Uh, if you have a nice compass, a compass will actually have a sight on it like a gun does. And that's where the phrase shooting an azimuth comes from. Is because it'll have a gun sight that flicks upwards and you can actually pretty accurately fire directionals around. And that's a big part of the mapping process is being able to draw straight lines in between things and triangulate. Once you learn how to triangulate, you'll never be lost again. There's also different types of compasses. I don't know, we're getting into geology talk right now because no geology should be found anywhere without his compass. There's Bruntons, there's Freibergs, there's a bunch of different compass types. I personally like the Freibergs. Bruntons are good, but Bruntons are kind of bare bones compasses. Uh, a Brunton... A Brunton is like a really, really nice basic compass. Probably run you like 300, 400 bucks. A Freiburg, on the other hand, if you got yourself a Freiburg, you are the envy of all your geology friends. Because a Freiburg is basically one of the first big purchases most geologists are going to make. A Freiburg is like what I told you. It'll have like the gun sights on it. It'll have like a range finder. It'll have a level, although all compasses will have that. Uh, the range finder, it'll have an angle finder so that you can shoot an azimuth to a location. And if you know your altitude, you'll know the altitude of the thing that you're shooting at off in the distance. And then you can also get vertical triangulation, which is incredibly important for geology. You have to have that. And so that's one of those things that you can either do it by hand using a topographical map, taking two separate locations. So you'll stand on a rock that's at 1,000 feet, stand on another rock that's 2,000 feet, shoot an azimuth between the two, and in your head you just mentally realize there's an incline there. And then what you can do is you, that's how you also you can track things beneath the soil. Because in general, if you're in an area where there hasn't been a ton of random deformation or anything like that and the majority of the beds are straight, you can extrapolate a great deal of information very easily that way. That's why I think a lot of people that are engineers and whatnot do not like geology because geology is highly, um, I don't even know what to call it. I'm not going to say intellectual because that's not the right word. But you know, you know, there's a word that I'm looking for where you have to be able to picture things in your head when you're a geologist. You have to be able to see mathematical lines being drawn in your head while you're doing stuff. And it's very... It's artistic, actually. I find that the people that are the best geologists tend to be really good artists. They can picture things in their heads very, very well. They can come up with a mental image of what something looks like. Uh, we work with engineers a lot, and so geologists and engineers have a running... Uh, geologists and engineers have a bit of a running... Not conflict, but a rivalry. Got another crate over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump my crates by this boat. So there's one crate, two crate, red crate, blue crate. We've got another crate over here, so I'll drag that back with me. We'll carry this off to this side, and basically we just want to catalog what we have here. Figure out, like, what things are around. So this one's just got a whole bunch of building materials in it. That one's got nothing in it. They only take up three slots, but if we can have almost every single slot having a crate in it, I think that sounds pretty good to me. I will more than likely strip this island bare. Let's do a little bit of wreck exploration over here, and we'll see what we can find. Uh, we know there's a shark around, so we don't want to play with our lives too much. Oh, barrels. Do I have to free them? Like, do I have to smack the chain or something like that? How do I get these free? 
It looks like they're chained down. Let me see what I can do here. I got an axe. Yeah, we can smack them free. Very cool. Uh, grab the barrels and let's take them back with us. We might be able to do something with this. I think the barrels are used as flotation foundations for the elevation of our new floating stations. But uh, we'll bring these back too just so we've got an idea of what's on this island. Everything in this game is useful, so you should definitely be collecting like everything. Because you never know when you're going to need a couple of things. Just like random objects like barrels are the perfect example. You never know when you're going to need like barrels or like corrugated steel or anything like that to get a project done. And I'm glad that that worked exactly the way that I was hoping it would work. You just have to break the chains and bring that over here. And I think I can just like throw that. There we go. I'll just throw that over there. I haven't played the game in a long time, so my throwing skills are a little bit lackluster at this point. We want to watch out for urchins. I wouldn't go down into these areas right here. There's lots of poisonous stuff in the tropics that you can accidentally step on. Hurt yourself. Probably want to have some water socks or something if you're going out into the water in this environment. A wetsuit would probably be a good idea since we know there's sharks around. A mesh suit would be an even better idea. However, I'm thinking that a mesh suit is probably outside what we're going to find in this area. Although you could make... A makeshift I mean with barrel we have a barrel so I mean, with a barrel you should be able to make some kind of makeshift suit you just got to sit there and you have to have like needle nose pliers with snips on them and you could snip rings from that I mean we've got enough metal laying around with corrugated steel if we couldn't do it with the other stuff we could absolutely do it with corrugated steel uh, we've got a refined axe over there consoles got baked beans in it that stacks with what we've already got let me get back up to the surface and we are actually oh shit I just got bit by a shark that dude came out of nowhere. Holy bejesus. That dude came out of left field like he didn't give a damn. Holy shit. Wow, that scared me actually. That made me jump. I was like, oh god, it's a shark. Okay, so let me see what I can store over here. This crate right here will be for extra tools that we find along the way. So we've got lashings and we've got rocks in there. I will make an effort to run around the island and pick up all the rocks. We do have a lot of driftwood here too, which is pretty useful to us. Uh, we already established this was for building materials, so we'll throw a tarp in there. And then I got a couple more crates that I should be able to throw down on. I don't think we opened this one either. That one's got a tarp and a spear in it. So let's move some stuff around. A couple more tarps in there. This one right here is full. We'll throw the, ah oh shit, we'll throw the spear into this one and the hammer so that we're not carrying like a full inventory or anything because there is a lot of stuff down in the bottom of that ship that I would like to have. If that shark is still around though, he hit us pretty hard. He, he hurt us. Not like crazy badly, but he definitely put a little bit of pain on us. But yeah, I think we're in pretty solid shape right now aside from the shark wound. I've got a shark wound now. I'm getting salt water and everything else inside of it. If you got a wound in this environment, that's not good either. Hot, humid climates are not good for wounds. They are problematic. This coconut's in a weird spot. I don't think I'm going to be able to get it. It's like inside of the tree. We need some kind of water source, though, and if we can't find a water source, which for now is looking like coconuts, we can't get a water source. We're going to have some issues. There we go. Got that one. I don't know if there was any more on that one. They get more or less coconuts, depending on how big they are. The bigger tree should have a whole bunch for it. Although, occasionally, you do find, like, an itty-bitty little baby tiny tree. Itty-bitty little baby tiny tree will sometimes have things. I do need sticks, actually, so I will take sticks. Basically, I'll pick up... Wow, he went straight up the side of that thing. This dude over here, the million-dollar man, springing his way up trees like he doesn't give a damn. Oh, uh, there's a snake over here somewhere. Oh, it's in front of that yucca plant. Okay. There is a difference between yucca and yucca, by the way. There are two different plants that have kind of the same name. There's the yucca plant and there's the yucca plant. Yucca plants are great for lashings and stuff like that. Uh, yucca plants are like potatoes that grow in tropical environments. You can fry them up. It's almost like an island sweet potato. I'm surprised they haven't put things like uh, taro and whatnot in this game either because if you're in a tropical environment, you should be able to find taro here and there. And taro will mash up and make poi. I mean, you can make bread out of poi. You can make all kinds of stuff out of... You can make all kinds of stuff out of taro. The entire Hawaiian culture was propped up on taro leaves and fish for however long, thousands of years in all honesty. There's evidence that suggests Hawaiian folks were there for a long, long, long time. 
and they never unified the islands till King Kamehameha came along. King Kamehameha the Great. You know how he became king? He lifted a big ass rock. Because that's how we do in Hawaii. That's how we do. If you can lift this Volkswagen sized rock, you get to be king. Because ain't nobody want to sink a punch from you. I'm like, yeah, you can tell him he's not king, but I'm pretty sure he's going to hit you. And man, does that guy have forearms on him. That dude's got the forearms of a key grip. There we go. And so now we've got a few more things that we can store away. I'll put building materials in here. Some rocks and whatnot. As far as the coconuts go, these are going to have to be for our own safety. Uh, we need the coconuts over here, like, right this second. We do have a refined axe, which is pretty sweet. I'm looking forward to using that. That's actually going to be a flint napped tool, which is quite a bit better than just using, like... How are we doing now? Not totally squared away, but... It got us close. There we go. I'll drink that one, too, and then we should be solid. Cool. Throw the coconuts over here. We've still got a pretty good supply of food for the future. Uh, we should be able to pick this place clean without too many more things going wrong. And in fact, I might begin raft construction over here just because we have the parts and we have the materials. It might be worth it. I mean, I'm not trying to make like a driftwood raft or anything like that. But, I mean, we've got barrels. Uh, there's another set on top of one of these boats over here. I wonder if I can duck through this hole in the, uh, well, let's call it the fuselage, but it's not a fuselage. Hopefully that shark ain't around. I have no idea how I'm going to get on top of this bastard, though. I might be able to build a ladder or something to get up there. Is that pipe important? It's kind of large and glowy, which made me think that maybe it's important. I might be able to put a foundation right here with a ladder that goes up onto that one. But it'll kind of depend if we even want to mess with it for now. Maybe I'll do it in the next episode. I'm going to have to build a shelter or something pretty soon anyways. Get out of the water here and we'll grab everything else from the bottom side of this tanker. So that had nothing left in it. That had a flare gun and a tarp. Acceptable. And if I can dive quick enough... And there's a suitable hole... In the side of the ship... I don't see anything in the cargo area, though. I think that one's good. I think we're solid right there. I don't think we have to worry about it too much. Yeah, I know. I'm drowning. Life is bad. Everything is terrible and harsh. I know. So melodramatic. A little bit of water in your lungs, and suddenly you don't want to play anymore. Suddenly you don't want to be a part of this great island adventure any further. Is there anything in this lower deck area? No, so let's get back up to the surface. They definitely nerfed the amount of time you could be underwater. They nerfed that shit hard. Oh, shit, we got another shark coming in. Let me get up out of the water real quick. Oh, there he is right there. He almost got me. Almost got me, Sharky. You almost got me, foul beast of the water. Foul oceanic scavenger. You filthy mongrel of the depths. Hopefully he can't come in here. If he can, we got problems. Hey, there's a bandage. That's good. Some duct tape. That's always good. Wouldn't turn it down. Grab that crate real fast, too. Well, it's got a locker and some barrels on top of this thing. Fire torch. Let me... I will drop the crate right there. It's got vitamin pills and a spear inside of it, so that's already full. Ugh. We're going to we're gonna have to wreck dive this one, too. But we've got pretty considerable treasures to be thought of here. Was there anything else on this side, or is this just open to, like, nothingness? Looks like it opens to nothing. All right. Uh, in general, you probably want to avoid breathing oxygen from trapped areas like this. I personally wouldn't do it, because you don't know if there's a gas leak in the area or anything else like that. This just been slowly, like, leaching toxic shit up into the air. Just stuff to think about. Yeah, I don't think he can come up here. Neither do I think we can race him, however. Did I get to the shore okay? I got to the shore okay without the shark getting me. And if I can get up there, that's three more barrels for raft crafting. I think you need three barrels or two barrels in order to make a floating foundation. So we can get a better raft than the one that we currently have. Uh, this guy's all full up. So we've actually got considerable treasure from this island. Like, legit. We've got crazy amounts of treasure from this place. And I think this is going to be... Well, I think it's going to be a good day. Throw some beans in there. Bandage won't fit, that won't fit, won't fit, and won't fit. So we're basically about full up to the point where 
I'm about to start ditching stuff that we have multiples of. Do I have infinite flares? No? I don't know how many flares you end up with. The bandage is nice. I'm not bleeding, though, I don't think, so I don't think I need it right now, but I will take medical supplies as, like, recompense. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to our main island and dump this stuff off. And once I get there, well, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep this stuff where it's at for right now. Take as many crates back with me as I can carry. Now what we'll do is we'll fill the crates with building supplies. And once the crates are full of building supplies, I'll bring those back over here and we'll start construction on our raft in the next episode of Stranded Deep. Uh, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Stranded Deep, a game that really kind of put my channel on the map. This was one of those games that, you know, my channel was like nowhere until I did Stranded Deep and did like 2 million views on it. And so uh, thank you for joining me. If you like what I do here on the channel, check out my Patreon. I'll have it linked for you in the end video and down below. Aside from that, you can get Stranded Deep if you like the way that the game looks down below as well. Hi to everybody, and we will reconvene tomorrow.